I want to apologize in advance because I've been having camera issues. It's a long story, but I have a camera coming and it won't be here till Wednesday. But for now, the audio is just all my stuff. It's also a disaster in my house right now, so just ignore the chaos. I wanted to give you guys like a quick update on the house there's like a lot that goes into buying a home i'm sure a lot of you guys know i personally have never bought a house this is my first home purchase hopefully the last <laughs> it's not fun i mean there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot of like logistics and like behind the scenes work and you're working with like a million different people so we're just kind of going through all that kind of stuff but everything seems to be going through looks like we will be moving sometime at the end of november Bryson's birthday is wednesday he's gonna be one i cannot believe it i'm gonna get emotional but yeah we like joke this is gonna be bryson's first birthday present is a home <laughs> that's kind of currently where we're at just a lot of like stuff going on like they accepted our offer we've pretty much put down a lot already we haven't done the down payment but we've like paid quite a lot for just other fees they did like the inspection they've done the appraisal like all that fun jazz that i just tells you to deal with and i don't even want to hear it see it or talk about it it stresses me out and i don't really understand it but yeah it's definitely in the works but i'm kind of at that point where i'm like living in a place where i know that i'm going to be leaving and when i'm like that it's almost like the end of high school and you know that like senioritis you know if you're like going to school you've already graduated but you're you're still you know you still kind of have to go and your classes are still going it's like that <laughs> i'm like i'm done with this place you just kind of kind of have to be patient and then we got to deal with the move and that's like a whole nother thing so i'm trying to figure all of that out an out-of-state move is just so expensive i've done it once before kind of like twice right but like in and out of new york city it's kind of where i'm at i have like a, a lot of just like busy work stuff to do today i need to cook up some bryson food kind of like meal prep for the bub which actually now that i think about it i kind of want to try to get him on like actual solids we tried the baby led weaning we like ended up pretty much just doing pureed food but he's eating like all real food it's not like baby jar food or anything like that like i pretty much make all of his food so i have to do that but i want to try to see if we can figure out maybe some like bite-sized pieces that he can start experimenting with oh i finished a book that i freaking love I've actually finished all of my fall reading. I'd like to sit down with you guys before Bryson wakes up here and talk about the book. That'll be so much fun. Okay, we're gonna do that next. Let me finish my hair and then we'll talk fall reading. I'm gonna tell you guys the order of my fall books from my least favorite to my favorite. So I have um, two, four, six books here that I read for fall. The worst one by far is The Mountain Is You <laughs> because I didn't honestly read it. I read like the first three pages. Basically one of those books where it's like, you're thinking like this and when you think these negative thoughts X, Y, and Z, and it's like, I wasn't even thinking that, but now that you put that in my head and it almost like creates a problem before you even start reading and you're like, I was just gonna read this to learn about like the mind and how our bodies like operate with our mind and then it's like you're thinking negative and you're doing it's like it's just i couldn't read it because i'm like this is causing me to feel like i should be thinking like this and i wasn't even thinking about thinking like this until i read this so didn't even start it i felt like it was going to be super toxic so i didn't even finish this i feel bad i'm, I'm gonna donate this and this one's such a shame the book of charlie so this is a book about wisdom from a 109 year old he was like this all-american kind of guy I was so excited about this one but the guy who wrote it was writing about his neighbor who's charlie and he is a journalist and he was writing as if we we're reading a newspaper like he was going through like all of charlie's history and you know honestly i could have just did my own history research and i would understand what he went through but it what had nothing to do about charlie it was more so the history of charlie the time frame that he lived and i was like just so bored but if you get to the very very back of the book he actually gives you what charlie specifically states and like all of his wisdom throughout his years and like that last chapter was exactly what i wanted the book to be about but it ended up just being kind of like a journalist history novel which is such a shame because i feel like charlie could have given you a lot more wisdom um throughout the book but unfortunately didn't really do it for me then comes the Im immoralist so this one i really 
like I don't know I didn't really like it it was really slow I got to the middle and then I'm just like oh my god what's like come on like she just dragged things on so long it was a little like gross at times I don't know I think she was trying to make it like this super sentimental book because you're going through so much of these characters lives with them but it just it didn't do it for me i don't know you know those books that just make such an impact on you and you're like the characters like i just felt the characters and like she was trying to do that but it just it just didn't quite come through and it just ended up being kind of boring i i, I can see where she was going with how she wanted the reader to go but it didn't didn't do it didn't do it okay the unfair advantage it's actually my pastor's book he is such an amazing speaker he gets like things in your mind pretty quickly he's super broad i would say like third grade level in terms of spirituality or faith or anything so like you really just it hits so many people he doesn't dive too in depth with it but i love that because it's so simplistic and like it doesn't need to be super extravagant crazy wording or lingo for him to put his point in your mind he doesn't overcomplicate things if you are dealing with something that you you're struggling with kind of looking at the positive behind it. it it was great like i literally highlighted so much i wrote so much in this book it, it's one of those books where you're just like yes 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 it's a good book and then the cabin at the end of the world this was such a good book one of my favorite things ever is when a book has a movie especially like a more modern movie i think it's on prime correct me if i'm wrong it's such a mind and obviously the book is so much better than the, the movie. They did a good job with the movie. The ending was so different and I didn't like it. They were trying to make it not as horrific. It's insane. It makes you think at the end you're kind of just like left with it's up to your interpretation, which I kind of love because then you can go on all like the Reddits and Goodreads and see what everyone thinks. But this was really good. I really recommend to read the book before watching the movie. Honestly, I wouldn't even watch the movie. Like, I would watch the first half of the movie, but then, like I said, the ending is totally different, which I really hate when they talk at the end, but such a good book. Really liked it. It kept me on my toes. It's a perfect thriller. And then talk about a thriller. Who would have thought the horror book was my favorite? How to Sell a Haunted House. I saw this from, like, a book tubers video saying that this was one of her favorite books i'm typically drawn towards the goodreads ratings if they're like over four stars i typically like them if they're around three or less i don't and this one actually had a three so i was kind of worried but it was so good i actually almost didn't finish i was halfway through and i'm like i don't think i can finish this like it is so scary <laughs> and it's graphic that's this, this author i think there's something wrong with him grady hendrix it's like the perfect mix of horror and an actual story behind the horror it's a book about family it's a book about um grief it's actually broken down into like if you see the dark pages here it's broken down into the five stages of grief and the action usually in books like this or thrillers all happen at the end there was action packed in the whole thing which i loved like it was just it was so well written it was terrifying like like i said i didn't know i almost didn't finish i'm so glad i did because i ended up like crying at the end like who cries from a horror book it was a really 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 good good book it was well done i'm i'm rating this five out of five for the other ones this was like a 4.5 out of five i'd say this is like a three out of five and then the rest like ugh, this is like a one and a half this was like a one and then I didn't, I, I can't even say because I didn't finish them, so it's not fair. But I will link the my three most favorite down below. But I, I'm excited I finished that. I get to start my winter books, which I'm so excited about. Got my winter bookmarks out. I actually found these on Pinterest. If I can find them down below, I will link them. But they have a little Bible verse. It comes with all of these colors. And I usually will do like the spring ones, like the springy like that's like spring i do like fall is dark and orange the winter ones are a little bit like cooler toned i'm weird i know but these are the two books that i'm going to start here in the next little bit i'm excited especially for this one i've I'd like after doing my um winter reading list a lot of you guys mentioned that this was one of those like life-changing books so i'm excited to start both of these i'm probably going to do that tonight but in the meantime i have a lot of just like i said things to do we have a lot going on we have the move unfortunately xander's grandmother passed away so her funeral is actually on bryson's birthday which is in two days so he's going to be in and out for that we have bryson's actual birthday party this weekend that i haven't even 
anything for adding that to the list birthday prep i have been having camera issues i gotta get that figured out i have a few errands to run i have a princess polly order that has not come in and i feel like i ordered it like a month ago so i need to hop on that and see what's going on we have a trip in mexico at like thanksgiving time i'm actually skipping thanksgiving this year because we have a wedding xander's brother is getting married so that's like a destination wedding which honestly is kind of like stressful but i'm very excited it's going to be z and i's like first actual getaway because like we did north carolina without bryson but we were like looking for homes we had like a schedule and we did a little bit of vacationing but it wasn't really a vacation so this mexico trip is going to be so fun we get to spend time with this family which i'm super stoked about like they're amazing and I'm very much excited. It's like a very, very elite resort. We get like a butler. What the fuck? Anyway, so we're excited for that. Um, and then obviously we have the move itself. And then we have Christmas. And am I doing Vlogmas? I, I'm not quite sure yet. I want to try to film as much as I can because I love that time of day. I already have an advent calendar, guys. I would ideally love to do that. If I can figure out like an actual routine and schedule for myself, I, I would do it. But with everything going on, I'm like, I don't even know where we're going to be because there's so much going on in between that that I, 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 I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Basically, my head's all over the place, which is why I need one of these. This is like... um. A cold brew. I actually have the cold brew pods from Nespresso. Again, trying to not purchase too much right now just because we're about to move. But there's this cold brew that I found. It was buy one, get one free at Greenwise. It's called Busy. And it will literally make you bzz. Like you're like, oh my god, I feel it. Anyway, I'm talking too much because I'm bizzed out. I'm going to try to do some food prepping for rice and Yeah, let's just do some meal prep. I mean, he pretty much is just throwing it on the floor. It's weird too because of his age. So he's gonna be a year, but he's technically adjusted nine months. So like at what point does he reach those specific milestones? I mean, obviously I talked to his pediatrician, but at this point they're becoming a little bit more spaced out. So I feel like I should just write down all these questions because this is the stuff that like honestly drives me crazy because I just feel so much anxiety. I know there's a difference between gagging, there's a difference between choking, but I really don't like the feeding thing. Like I'd rather just do purees, but is it healthy for him? Is it gonna delay him? I don't freaking know. He basically just is playing with it. Like I said, he's throwing it on the floor. I don't I don't get it. Like I feel like he didn't really even eat. So mother struggles honestly if there was like some sort of feeding nanny like a food nanny nobody wants to do this especially a mom that had a premature baby and is terrified like i need to get over that but honestly sometimes it just panics me like i literally panic it's not an enjoyable process that's for sure i'm gonna clean this up and then i need to go run a few errands because i have things to do i mean come on really he literally just looked at me and just would go and then look down. He's like, ooh, look what I did. I'm painting. He's come to figure out what what happened to his masterpiece. Look at my freaking vacuum. It has sweet potato all over it. You crazy boy. Can I see this? Thank you. Milkshake. Mm. Bryson just got down and do my computer work. You know my big 
like Mac desktop it is no longer i had my mom drop it off it was in her storage unit i <laughs> like did the updates and everything i haven't used it in like over a year and it is so slow i was like i can't i can't work with this you know a laptop is it is what it is do you guys even still work on the desk like the desktop or the big mac bag whatever you call it it's beautiful it's just it's so unnecessary now yeah i'm gonna do a little bit of computer work here and i'm trying to knock out as many videos as i can i want to get back to just vlogging every day the first year with the kid it's hard to get adjusted you know like you have to figure out like a new routine every week and like right when you get used to a new routine and you feel like you like you can figure it out and you can live around it something changes like they lose a nap or like i don't know they start teething and they're like they have a sleep regression and then you're just like back to square one and you can't really catch up and so i'm just hopeful that it's probably most likely just going to be the first year i was going to get help but then we're moving so i'm like i might as well just wait so i don't want to like hire somebody and then end up having to move and then go through the process again so i'm just waiting until we move since we're moving out of state and we can't like bring a person with us yeah it's just been, it's just been this like crazy adjustment period but i really want to get back to just vlogging all the time with you guys because I, I really i've opened up about this before but i miss you guys and i miss like us and I, I don't know i just feel like my channel the past year or so it's just been hard with the baby and like with all of the life changes that have been happening anyway anywho i'm gonna get back to editing look who just woke up can i have a hug oh thank you my wolfa oh thank you my stinker <laughs> what i know you're sleepy boy i know come on oh oh I love when he wakes up, he's so sweet, oh my god, you're so sweet! Have a kiss? The chair spins! Spin, spin, spin! Bryson is spinning the chair! Spinning the chair! Spin, 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 spin! You know what I'm Spinning the chair! Bryson right now is really into the word spin. <laughs> Is he really? I was on the swivel chair and he was on the swivel chair with my mom and every uh, time he would go yeah. run and crawl over and he'd play with the swivel chair and I would go spin 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 he would go <laughs> Whenever we put on Miss Rachel we automatically just start speaking in her voice I'm saying the same thing three times and then I'm saying it differently three more times mm -hmm. and then I say the same thing again slightly differently three more times Spin 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 spinning the chair Spinning the chair Spin 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 to play with this playlist. Super excited. Sorry I've been vlogging a lot. Like my camera issue will be resolved hopefully on Wednesday. I thought it was gonna be resolved a week ago, but unfortunately stuff happened. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. I'll see you guys very soon for another one with a better camera. <laughs> <laughs>